Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Escada. Yesterday, you watched Jeff Kanata. We're going to be in the studio together at the same time. It's going to be the greatest thing ever. Uh, we're not like Schrodinger's Tomorrow Daily. Uh, we're going to be in a set, our actual new set, and we're going to do a 45-minute show just for you. And we're going to talk about all the stuff we talked about this week, but we're going to deep dive. So let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys, a real-life jetpack that looks like it doesn't suck to pilot. Look, Jetpack Aviation is responsible for the JB9 jetpack, an actual jetpack in the sense that it uses turbine jets and a backpack to propel its pilot. And it looks super duper agile. Inventor David Maiman took the JB9 for a spin around the Statue of Liberty, you know, as one does. And man, that thing looks super beautiful in flight, which is a big time difference compared to a lot of other jetpacks out there. It kind of looks and feels like a big deal. The Jetpack's turbine engines run on simple kerosene and can carry about 10 gallons of fuel, which is good for about a 10 minute flight depending on how much the pilot weighs. It's small enough to stick in the backseat of a car and light enough to jog a bit with the tank full. Unfortunately, it's not for sale. He says for now he wants to be sensible about who gets their hands on the JB9 as they develop the JB10. I gotta be honest with you guys, I am terrified of heights, but I would totally take a spin on this thing. Okay, so next story, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited would you be if I told you there were flying modular holograms? Because there are. A team at Queen's University created Bit Drones, a series of tiny drones with some interesting capabilities. This is a super early concept that you're seeing, but let's imagine a lot more of these things creating shapes as you hear how the technology works. So there are three different kinds of drones working here. Pixel drones, which have an LED display for showing information. Shape drones, which can join up with the others like it to make cubic displays in three dimensions. And then display drones, which are literally a flexible touchscreen mounted on nano drone. In the demo, they use the pixel drones to browse files by moving the drones left and right and then tapping the desired file. Then they deploy the shape drones, which are flying cubes that indicate the basic markers for a 3D building model. And the operator can drag the drones around to change the orientation and adjust parameters, pinch the zoom using two drones, and use the display drone to control the model remotely. The system only supports a dozen drones currently, but the goal is to scale the idea up to thousands of much, much smaller drones. In essence, that would kind of make them like a flying pixel display that could be manipulated and changed in real time, which sounds pretty fun, honestly. Uh, okay, so our very last story, Disney Research is back in the news. They have an interactive design system for 3D printed robots that even you and I can use. ETH Zurich collaborated once again with Disney Research and Carnegie Mellon University to create an interesting software that enables anyone to design their very own 3D printed robot. You start out with a basic foundation with virtual motors in every joint, but then you can click and drag and add or remove motors, adjust how the robot looks when it walks, and generate 3D geometry for your robot body. You can even watch how your little robot will look when it's walking via physics simulation. Well, software lets you input what 3D printer you have and what type of filament you're using, and then it will optimize the final design based on that data to make you the strongest 3D printed robot possible. The team made five different types of robots, each with their own gait and numbers of legs, including a five-legged robot, which is really creepy. You won't be making your robot run, though, since the software can't handle that yet. But the team doesn't seem to be really concerned with that. They actually seem to be more concerned with the creative side of the design and letting you unleash your imagination in making weird 3D printed robots with five legs. Honestly, my favorite part of that video is when the little tiny four-legged robot waves at me. Hi, little robot, you're so cute. All right, guys, let's talk about Mod Squad. Today, we're gonna look at a little bit of fashion. Lena Wasong designs clothes with wearable technology inside, and she recently debuted a skirt with some fun surprises. The skirt is controlled by Arduino and features a microphone and LED lights. When the skirt hears music, it lights up. But this is not a standard equalizer skirt or anything like you've seen before. It actually lights up based on the musical notes it hears and creates a sort of LED visualization of the music it's hearing. 
Of course she had this idea while she was at Burning Man, and she'll probably wear it there next year. But the best part is she put the entire process up on Instructables, including hooking up the electronics and installing LEDs in leather fabric. So honestly, if you need an LED kind of equalizer visualization skirt, you are now covered. Uh, the internet says you're welcome. All right, guys, it's time for our photographer of the day. Our photographer of the day today is Yuan, who sent in this gorgeous photo with his Xperia Z3. He wrote to us and he says, Hey everyone at Tomorrow Daily, I watch your show all the time. Really enjoy the content. I recently flew down to Cape Town from Johannesburg in South Africa and took a few pictures with my Sony Xperia Z3 in and around Cape Town. Cape Town is a very cool and trendy city. Just thought I'd share my beautiful country with you. You have my permission to use them, of course. Keep on making geeks happy. Thank you. Greetings from sunny South Africa, Yuan Vanderpoel. Yuan, it was such an amazing picture. You actually sent in a bunch of pictures from Cape Town. Now I want to visit. I'm going to add it to my list of places I want to go. Uh, if you guys want to send in your photography to make me jealous of where you live, you can email us tomorrow at CNET.com. Make sure you give us permission to use your picture. Send your actual photo, don't forget to attach it, and tell us a little story about it, just like Yuan did, because it was great. And if you want to find us online, you can find us at Tomorrow Daily on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we are also at TomorrowDaily.com if you want to share the show with a friend, which is always great. And I am at Ashley Escada, Jeff is at Jeff Kanata with two N's and one T, and producer Logan is at Logan Moy on Twitter if you would like to befriend us. Uh, that is it for the show. Today, we will be back with a brand new docket of weird, wonderful science fact meeting science fiction with some discussion tomorrow because it's going to be a long show, so get ready. Uh, but until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>